Hey everybody, it's Richard Monsdell. It's my daily karate vlog, number 67. And I'm just flying because we've had a fantastic weekend with the Canada Open Karate Championships 2017. That's right. It was the inaugural event. It was fantastic, like 650 athletes, lots of people, great feeling from everybody. Uh, I want to thank absolutely all the, the athletes, parents, coaches, officials, supporters, organizing committee, um, Karate BC, Karate Canada, uh, Fumio Demura Sensei, the Richmond Oval, Richmond Hosting, uh, Bushido Martial Arts, SMAI, uh, Martial Arts as well, uh, STGE, um, the merchandising company, they were fantastic. Um, just everybody was really great. Um, it was a dream to put on uh, a Canada Open, and uh, I thought we'd maybe hit, you know, 400 people from a few places, but teams from India and Mexico, and, and um, there's people from Italy, Spain, Hungary, um, France, like, yeah, it was incredible. Japan was there. Um, just a, a really incredible event. So some highlights of the event, I think, was people realizing that they don't have to put too much pressure on themselves. You know, they're in Vancouver at the beginning of summer, um, having a really good time. They can enjoy themselves and meet some people. Another highlight was just the enthusiasm for this type of event, you know, that people wanted to work together. And of course, like anything, things go sideways. There's uh, hundreds and hundreds of little stories. You know, some people only traveled 20 minutes from their house. Some people saved all their money for a year to buy a ticket to come to Canada and just barely get the visa to enter the country the night before. They would have lost all their money they spent on their ticket. They flew all this way to have this experience. You know, some people were going through, you know, um, uh, family tragedies. Some people were in the middle of, of something really intense, but this t gave them the opportunity to, to get them out of their funk and get them moving. Yeah, there's no one person who can create magic. All we can do is work with each other. You know, when I was in the Tokyo High School uh, Karate League, which was really intense, you know, they produce a lot of WKF champions, um, there was always a saying by everybody at every tournament that they want everything to go smooth. They didn't, no one wanted to be the person who walked around and created the friction for something not to happen or, or, or not to, um, to dis distract from the purpose of the event which is for those three legs of the officials, the athletes, and the coaches putting on something that's fantastic with the wonderful support from organizations and parents. And I think we really saw that there on this weekend, you know, at the Canada Open. Um, it's the idea that we're all volunteers. Everybody's a volunteer, you know? And, you know, the people who are working at a venue, they're not getting paid big dollars. So we're all real volunteers. But just being a volunteer doesn't mean we can't be professional or professional and nice to each other. Um, and take the high road. You know, when someone uh, gives you a penalty, you don't understand it's not really personal, that personal uh, uh, offense that they're just in the moment that they caught you off guard with a technique. Um, yeah, so everyone understood. They were a volunteer and they had to do this together. And the idea that coaches could be there for their club athletes, for their members of their club, and hold their hand. That was really big, you know. Uh, from our club, we had um, three, four of our black belts there helping out. And that was, the parents loved to see that. They look around and there's somebody there for them, you know. Uh, it was really awesome to hear people who liked volunteering. That they enjoyed the step-by-step -step reasoning for things. That they enjoyed being close to the match. And the instant gratification, instant feedback of a job well done. You know, if you, you were doing the, the scorekeeping and the timekeeping correctly, you know, even with the officiating, it's the same thing. If you're doing it as best as you can, there's immediate feedback from that. You know, most of the time, you're getting it right. With officials, it was awesome to see so many people come, especially from a little far away and farther, farther away. And I think we had officials from India come. For the athletes on the mat and for the parents and the coaches, 
we're not really concerned what your level is because the level you have doesn't matter when the person steps on the mat. That's when your eyeballs kick in. That's when your experience kicks in. There are provincial level, uh, state level referees who watch a million videos. They've been to Japan for a long time or they've been training their eyeballs to get their eyeballs just right, just as normally WKF level is as well. So what we're hoping for from a coach or an official or an organizer, you know, our last rodeo, that's great, but this rodeo is what counts, you know? Um, it was awesome to see people who had not been at a Karate BC event for years and years, Paul Eichen, and to see them have some fun, mix it up, make some friends, shake some old hands, that was really cool. So thank you very much for those people too who came, especially new to Karate BC, who wanted to find out what it's like to see the, uh, the professionalism of the whole organization and everybody pulled together. Another highlight for me was obviously Fumio Demura Sensei coming up, being so gracious and so humble and so easy to work with um, and meet people and shake people's hands and get excited about that. He also hit the drum when we did the Canada Open Kata and you can see the videos. Um, and at first he was trepidatious about the idea, but when he saw what we were doing, he just wailing on the drum. That was awesome. He wanted us to do it again on Sunday, so next year we'll have to do it twice. Um, and turn, to turn around, and I was expecting maybe 20, 30, 50 people, and to see like you know, 150 people and moms and dads in t-shirts and do a six-style combo karate kata. That was awesome to make them think that all karate is equal. You know, you're going to do Shodokan, Goju, Chito, Wado, Shito, um, Ryuidu, just some of the six of the many, you know. To meet people who are from a different style like Shorinru and dip their toe in the water and say, oh, this is really interesting. Um, to hear people that had requested if they can play music during the kata and they had quite incredible, interesting names. And to learn that there's a difference between open circuit karate where you can make up your own moves to music and the mainstream traditional world where they follow a, a list of kata from a list of styles. And to understand that those people were still welcome and we weren't going to turn them away. I sent uh, YouTube videos of, the, of some of the main fundamental katas to them so they could, they could see what it's like and think about coming next year. So I really enjoyed it. It was great. The professionalism of the first aid staff was awesome. Um, and someone told me this is the largest Karate BC tournament we've ever had, probably the largest karate tournament in Canada this year, and their injuries were really low, you know, much lower than when we uh, have like a 400-person event. So it's fantastic. I could probably go on and on about all the things that went on, but I just want to say that everybody who came out, spent their time and their personal money and brought their family and brought their willingness to help out, you know, I saw BC team coaches there that were sitting in the chairs. Every single one of them I so appreciated that. That looked great. You could see that they were connecting with the athletes. You know, there's no one person who does anything. We all have to all be part of a movement. And in BC, here in this province, we've really been doing this well. And we'll have hiccups. And people will, will, will really want to feel passionate on some issues. But when you look overall what we're doing together, it's just fantastic. And I really like to see that. And I like when people push back and say, give me uh, comments or they want to see something different happen. That's great. Like, I live for that. I hate to see everything just go swimmingly well. Whenever I've seen anything go really, really well, normally people start getting lazy and they start getting slow. The thing is we have to be not so hard on ourselves and not so hard on other people. You know, if people bump into me, they think I'm going to be judging them really hard. I'm not. And we have to be patient with each other and fans of ourselves and fans of this community, especially with the Olympic sunshine on. You know, today in the after school program, we did this exercise of looking at, you know, an imaginary apple and giving it wonderful names. This apple is a great apple. It's a wonderful apple. It's an amazing apple. But they couldn't really think of how to compliment the apple. But I drew another apple and I said, tell me how bad this apple is. Insult this apple. Boy, did they come up with a lot of names. I mean, a lot. Of, they, could, they could go to town on calling something something bad. Um, and I said, listen, look, 
while it's fun and it's funny, you know, words like that can cut. And the excites the apples, even though the outside might be different. When you look on the inside, it's all bruised. And I think that's in the same thing in our, in our community. So we have to work together. We have to be a model for the next person coming up. I think in Japan, they went through a lot of tension in the 60s and 70s and into the 80s, and it kind of just dissipated. And now the systems are in place so they're really athlete-focused, they're coach-focused, they're organization-focused. And I think we're getting to that area too where we can be a model in this next generation of people coming forward, respect the past, and look to the future. And I think the Canned Open was a really good idea of doing this. It really wasn't my idea. Lots of people have always said Canada Open. And then the Canadian Sport Institute said, hey, you guys should have an Open like the U.S. I'm like, All right, I'm a glutton for punishment. Let's get it done. Thank you to everybody. I'm going to be spending this week a little bit night by night, morning by morning, calling people back, uh, sending out extra medals, sending out extra thank yous, and figuring out what we're doing for next year. Oh, next year is planned. 2018, second annual Canada Open Karate Championships, June, second and third, again at the Richmond Oval, because it worked out great. And as of Saturday, Sunday, Canada's largest karate tournament inside our mainstream karate world. That's a challenge for everybody to come help out and for us to support everybody else's events out there. I'm Richard Mosdell. It's my daily karate vlog. Thanks for tuning in. Now that uh, the big event is over, I'm going to keep bringing you all kinds of good stuff every day. Thanks for watching. I look forward to hearing comments from you, getting some feedback, and seeing you soon.